YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to another video in Big Finish Month. Now this Big Finish video is going to be different from other videos I've done before speaking about the wonderful Big Finish. Here I'm going to talk about the early years of Big Finish. This is the area like the Beneath Summerfield range, the start of the Murphy range etc etc. Now 2016 has been Big Finish's golden year because right now there's no Doctor Who on TV, it's on a little bit of a break. So this was Big Finish's golden opportunity to let fans know about Big Finish. With all like the new series fans being quite upset that there's no Doctor Who in 2016 except for that Christmas special. So it's still a very long way away. You see how Big Finish have been doing a lot of new series releases because this is really going to direct these fans to Big Finish. Such as the 10th Doctor Adventures, they did a lot of advertisements around that and it actually met expectations. It was actually a very good set. So the 10th Doctor Adventures has really made new series fans aware that Big Finish are a thing and they're going to be doing new series releases so that's going to make them happy. However, this is why I'm going to be talking about the early years of Big Finish because with these new fans coming to Big Finish, them checking at the early days, the early years of Big Finish, all the early releases is very small and I find that a little bit sad I do in my opinion because there are some unbelievable classics and some masterpieces during the early years of Big Finish. So like when a new fan like learns about Big Finish, you would really only go for the later releases and rather overlook the ranges like the Companion Chronicles for example and as well the early releases because the fan will probably say well these releases came out in early 2000s so the sound quality the sound design is going to be a lot different and poor when compared to the recent releases now what i got to say to that that is a load of rubbish hey I'm not just recommended early Big Finish audios here I'm going to do some like facts on the Murphy Range audios for example I'm pretty much just talking about all the early releases yeah Big Finish as a company were founded in 1996 and for their first Big Finish audio they weren't allowed to do Doctor Who because they weren't licensed to so what they started out is with the character of Bernice Summerfield so this was a character from the Virgin New Adventures and her introduction is Love and War I was working with a team of mine excavating this great old arch on a planet called Heaven. What, really? We're on the edge of empire between human and draconian space. Heaven is host to farmers, the library, archaeologists. Archaeologists? That's what I was doing there. Digging up an ancient arch, and that's where I met the Doctor. Or rather, where he met me. I'm the Doctor. I'm the Professor. And I'm very busy, so if you don't mind, I Yes. Will... You need a sonic screwdriver. Beneath Summerfield as a character was a wonderful idea and the man behind it was Paul Cornell. So Big Finish did start with Beneath Summerfield audios, the first one being Oh No It Isn't by Paul Cornell. And yeah, if you don't know Oh No It Isn't, it's actually a virgin book from the Beneath Summerfield spin-offs and they did a few audio adaptions around them such as Beyond the Sun as well starting off the Time Ring trilogy which is Walking a Babylon birthright and just war. The ships are sitting, Duck. Can't you take evasive action? Evasive what? What do you think? This is a battleship. It takes 15 minutes to make a 45 degree turn. Oh my god, the screen's full of them. Do we have weapons? No. Force field, shields, anything defensive? No. Nope. What about ordinary equipment we can use as a weapon or a disguise or something? Oh, you mean like confusing their targeting systems by ejecting the cargo? Fill the space between us with millions of tons of rice grains, that sort of thing. Oh my god, Benny, yes, exactly that. Can you do it? No. Now, of course, as I said, they weren't licensed to do Doctor Who audio, so they couldn't put the character of the Doctor in these audios, as you know, birth fright and just war they're from the virgin new adventures featuring the doctor so of course they weren't allowed to use him so they made them as a Biddy summerfield story it's understandable why they actually picked birthright because the doctor isn't even in it i think he's only in the prologue and the epilogue is seen so of course they could just remove that and let's make a story Biddy summerfield very easily just war that was a Seventh Doctor story. They had to remove him out, but still, what Beneath Summerfield goes through in Just War is actually in the audio as well. Yes, Beneath Summerfield started out in September 1998 and is still going strong 
right now. It's wonderful to see that this character has lasted for so long and yet everyone has a love beneath Summerfield, especially classic fans who got like the Virgin New Adventures when they came out, for example. She had many single releases. That single release range had about like 53 or 54 releases. A lot of stories, then after that they upgraded to give us some box set releases and now the new adventure releases. And now putting the Doctor into the stories like the new adventures of Venice Stone Field Volume 1 with the 7th Doctor. And same thing with the Triumph of Sutek, they're being a little bit more outside the box with the new adventures. Especially Sutek, that was a little bit surprising to put in a Benice Summerfield release. It's nice to see that the Benice Summerfield range is just more experimental now. Because in the early years, they were on their baby feet, that's how I like to put it, they were on their baby feet. But still, that is not a reason to overlook the early years of Big Finish. See, the Benice Summerfield range started out in September 1998. And then, just a year after, they got the license to do Doctor Who audios and use the character of the Doctor. So they started out in July 1999 with the Sirens of Time. Oh! <coughs> Are you alright? I think I've broken something. What about you? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. Oh, yeah, I rather think I broke your fall. Oh, sorry. I'll survive. Oh, can you two help me up? Yes, okay. Yeah. Careful. Oh, careful. Oh, we're going to make a fine team with you two having to help me walk. Now, since these audios have been out for a very long time, all the 1 to 50 audios have been out of print for quite a while and they're no longer available on the Big Finish website, only available as downloads now. I had like a fear that 51 to 100 would soon go out of print. That would be horrible, but Big Finish have stated that that will not be the case which is good because even though the big finish rare audio hunting was quite fun it was also quite tedious you know my problem with master it wasn't even a rare audio i was just so damn unlucky with it yeah with the first few audios on the monthly range you can really see the big finish were on their baby feet at the time as some of the stories just how they were paced out. Some of the first two stories were a little bit weak, I would say. I think they were just playing around with the first few stories just to get used to everything. Because as I say, stories like Phantasmagoria and Land of the Dead, pacing was like a huge problem. That was like the big problem at the start with Big Finish. They didn't really ha know how to pace out their audios very well. Of course, they're very good at it now. You know, these are just writers getting to use to audio. This is pretty much for everyone. When starting out, you can see that everyone was on their baby feet. My channel in 2013, 2014, goddamn abysmal. My content's a lot more different than it was back in the day. And same thing with Big Finish. They were just on their baby feet at the time and just playing around, getting used to do Big Finish audios, Doctor Who audios. But you can also see as well they were being very experimental as well, testing new things out. Such as Whispers of Terror. Not strong with story, but it's very strong with like audio manipulation and all that. And you see they're testing around with it, playing with it, because the monster, the villain in the story is literally a sound creature, a monster, so they can play with the different frequencies and that. Everything that Crane recorded is now linked into the archives. The Museum of Oral Antiquities is enriched by the addition, just as the world is poorer at the reason for it. What do you think it is, Doctor? An invisible noise. A sentient sound source? Is that possible? Is what possible? Is he always so helpful and forthcoming? I'm afraid so. It's very annoying. You know, I think what we have here is a life form that has managed to modulate itself as a sound wave. So you can see in like Whispers of Terror, they were just being more clever with sound design, the different levels of it, and how to manipulate it. So you can see, back in the early days, they were experimental, trying different things out and see how well they can do it. And Whispers of Terror, fantastic with sound manipulation and all that. Sound design is beautiful in that story, I would say. The plot itself, again, the story is very slow in some places and pacing is a problem. However, this doesn't go for every single story, obviously at the start of the monthly range. And I did nail some unbelievable classics and some I really adore, like the Fearmonger, fantastic political story, really feels like the John Purry era, grabbing from the John Purry era and utilizing them fantastically for a seventh Doctor story. I can very much see the third Doctor and Joe Grant in the story, finding out the events in the Fearmonger, such as who's doing these mob strikes, these terrorist attacks, and what is the Fearmonger. It'd be a brilliant third Doctor story. Something's gotta be done. Something's gotta be done. Afraid to speak simple truths, 
for fear of being labelled politically incorrect or worse. He's called the Doctor. So what's this creature you were talking about, the fear monger? We know what it does and how it does it, but I'm afraid there's no easy label for what it is. And as well, from the first 15, we have a story which is one of my all-time favourites. But as I said, there's some classics which people really need to check out that Fearmonger story. If you're a Third Doctor fan and you haven't experienced that really good Earthbound political story, it would just pretty much be Third Doctor goodness, that story. And then, the, like, the Marian Conspiracy as well. This is the beginning of the Colin Baker which everyone loves. This is where Colin Baker absolutely shines. They tone down how he was utilised in the TV show. I still love Colin Baker in the TV series. He just wasn't dealt with correctly by the writers. As well, the stories were rather mediocre for him. I wouldn't just recommend The Marion Conspiracy for its story. I would recommend it to experience the chemistry between The Sixth Doctor and Evelyn and how The Sixth Doctor changed. Other classics as well, such as The Dalek Empire, lovely range stories. Genocide Machine, Apocalypse Element, Mutant Phase, and Time of the Daleks. I haven't listened to Time of the Daleks just yet at this point in time. But yeah, what I've experienced from the Dalek Empire Big Finish monthly range of reviews, I really want to check out the Big Finish series. That was a very early series by Big Finish. Just given the Daleks a spin off series. <laughs> I don't want to die. You know that. I know you know that. Look, let's stop pretending. So, all right, I'll do your dirty work for you. I'll do it. I'll do it, all right? Just leave me alone. The invasion of the Daleks has begun. And I'm very interested to check that out because I have listened to the Cyberman series and given Cybermen their own series and it was just marvellous it was, absolutely marvellous. The Genocide Machine, I hear rather mediocre reviews on, I actually, I absolutely adored the story, like an 8 out of 10, I thought it was very good and I personally find it underappreciated and the apocalypse element, cracking story, sound design and quality and the epic scale of this story is Unbelievable. It's like only the monstrous level, I would say, the sound design. It's so damn good. Seriously, whoever the sound designer was of the apocalypse element, you did one hell of a job. Actually, I really want to find out who it is. Oh uh, yeah, the sound designer was Nicholas Briggs. Well done, sir. No, seriously, an audio back in the day, this was like the 11th monthly range release. That long ago, the audio feels like it's got the quality for some of that's come out as a recent Big Finish release, it feels like only the monstrous it does to me. Explosions, the Dalek voices, everything. It's just alive. Everything in the audio feels great. So in the first 15, you know, they had their ups and downs. Like the Sirens of Time not really explaining much and leaving things rather quiet and not revealing them when they should have been revealed. Like part one's cliffhanger, what the hell happened to the Seventh Doctor. And like the pacing of Phantasmagoria and Land of the Dead, but still, they delivered some marvellous stories like Jonathan Blum's The Fearmonger, Jacqueline Rayner's story of the Marion Conspiracy, Robert Sherman's introduction to Big Finish with the Holy Terror. Yeah, Big Finish did get off their baby fit quite quickly and started to nail some classics which are still remembered now. The Holy Terror, a lot of people are still talking about that one, but it would be nice to see new fans get into these stories, the Marion Conspiracy, the Holy Terror. It would be lovely for you Big Finish fans to experience these audios. And as well, the Eighth Doctor's a Big Finish. How they're handling the Eighth Doctor is very different now. Oh no, Vortisor swarming to pick over the debris. Get away from there, you vultures! Leave that wreck in peace! I need you, Freyling. The Prime Minister needs you. Your king and your country need you to be stout, dependable and strong. It's just like I say, if I remember my Earth history correctly, the R-101 airship took to the skies for her maiden voyage to India early in October 19th. McGann is not really a part of the Monthly Range anymore. And his Doctor was handled not like the other Doctors. Like, in the start of the Monthly Range, it was like a fifth Doctor destroy. Six Doctor Story, Seventh Doctor Story, back to a Six Doctor Story again. It worked like that in a random order, really. 
With the 8th Doctor, they made it more consistent. Like with the first part of the 8th Doctor, it was four Story Storm, Morning Sword of Orion, Stones of Venice, and Minute in Hell. So at the start, they didn't really go random with the 8th Doctor, but when it was after a Divergent Universe arc concluded, and then they went a little bit more randomised. And yeah, we did say a temporal farewell to the 8th Doctor with the monthly range, and then he did come back with a trilogy of three stories for the Mary Shelley trilogy, but then the 8th Doctor's never returned to the monthly range. That's where he started his own range. Big Finish wanted to handle the 8th Doctor a lot like the 4th Doctor, as both these Doctors were very big. The 4th Doctor, of course, everyone loves the brilliant Tom Baker, and the 8th Doctor, he really pretty much started out in Big Finish. He only had one TV episode. He had the books, but that isn't really Paul McGann. Big Finish have built up Paul McGann's fantastic legacy of being a marvellous Doctor. He eventually did have his own range and now he's going to box sets now, which of course was Dark Eyes and now Doom Coalition. It would be nice though if Paul McGann, the 8th Doctor, has like a story or a trilogy again in the Murphy range, because I do miss him in the Murphy range. They still have him on the banner. They still use the 8th Doctor in the Murphy range, but they're not anymore. They're just keeping him to special releases, such as Classic Doctor's New Monsters, or the box sets now. It's obvious why they went down this direction, but it would be lovely to see like a, this marvellous surprise of the 8th Doctor back in the Murphy range for a trilogy, just like what they did in 2012, I believe. I might be wrong, someone correct me, with the Mary Shelley trilogy. Just seeing another 8th Doctor trilogy announced in the monthly range, like there's just the Two Masters trilogy, a lot of people will go, holy crap, I didn't expect this, but this is bloody awesome. That will be the reaction, and a lot of people will look into it. You can work like the Two Masters trilogy, but then put in the 6th Doctor, 7th Doctor, and 8th Doctor, something like that, and get rid of one of the Doctors. I didn't remove the 5th Doctor because I don't like him. Would Big Finish put the 8th Doctor back in the monthly range? Well, it would be very nice, but and it would give a monthly range a huge spark. But it seems like they're keeping to either a part of a special release, which is not in the monthly range, or as a box set. But still, I think everyone would be on board with the idea of the 8th Doctor appearing in the monthly range again, because it really would make it spark. It definitely had some classics, like Chimes in Midnight, voted the best monthly range story of all time. There's some where people may overlook, like Time of the Daleks, some people may overlook that one, but it did start you know, a very big arc which went into the insane mental Zagreus, which then went into the Divergent Universe, which is diversified, of course. It's to, to hate, perhaps to hate is safer, hmm? or to feel nothing. Do we feel nothing? Do we feel nothing? Why? Perhaps we feel nothing. Why? We just feel nothing. Why? If we don't speak, Why? perhaps we feel nothing. writers themselves know that Divergent Universe is rather an experimental move. So they were probably thinking that, yeah, this may not be for everyone, it's a little bit diversified. However, there's still some unbelievable classics in there, like Scherzo. What a work of art. Mental and insane, yes, but Robert Sherman knows how to do mental and insane. So at the start of the 8th Doctor, I wouldn't necessarily say a convoluted start for him. Nothing like the EDAs, that's a convoluted. Still, they went experimental for the 8th Doctor stories. They tried out new things like the bizarre, and yeah, the very original to Grayus. They definitely went bizarre with that one. And Scherzo as well. Omega, Davros, Master, and then the last one being Zagreus, but I don't technically put in the Villains trilogy. And what the whole monthly range did, the first 50, Gary Russell had a brilliant idea to build up this big event which is going to happen in Zagreus by mentioning Zagreus. The first mention of Zagreus was in Project Twilight. And again, the Project series, a massive arc within Big Finish. It's mentioned in countless Big Finish audience. Project Twilight, Project Lazarus, The Harvest, Black and White, Project Destiny, Gods and Monsters, No Man's Land. There's other ones as well. It was an arc which lasted for a very long time and there's been no other bits on 
the project series than the gods of monsters which was mentioned. In horrible agony and caused me all sorts of problems. So all these restraints are really for your own good. The why much for leaving? No. We were just getting to know each other, weren't we? Please. Reggie, pass me the syringe. Thank you. Now, Mr. Deeks, I need you to be Amelia's brave little soldier. No, you can't. Because this is going to hurt a lot. So yeah, I did like this idea by Gary Ross by building up the 50th release from the Murphy Range by Big Fish and then also celebrating kind of big time for Doctor Who being its 40th anniversary. And yes, the Grace as well mentioned in a few audios, as I said, Project Twilight mentioned as well in Omega. And you can see they really tried to do something different with the the villains trilogy, really now just focusing on the villain as characters. These are character-driven stories. It's nice to know more about the uh, Omega, Davros, and Master to see more into their characters. They're fascinating audio. Seeing what Omega was like in the story, Omega was certainly interesting. I've only listened to the first half of it, not all of it just yet. I haven't listened to any of Davros yet, but I would say it'd be a lot like I Davros exploring the character, and that is a masterpiece of a series and in master a wonderful story the left said on master the better i seriously recommend you check out master again it's really driven by character you have to be in the mood for it obviously but when you are in the mood of it it's literally a work of art believe me my dearest friends i write this letter in the hope that you will do me the greatest of favors on the 23rd of this month, I would be honoured if you would join me here in my home for dinner. It is ten years since my arrival in this town, an anniversary I feel I cannot possibly ignore. You've both treated me with such kindness and friendship. For the most part, the last ten years have been more than I could ever have hoped for. Of course, recently, Perfugium has become a darker place. But for one night at least, let's forget about the darkness. And with the first 50, there were a few changes. And not a lot of people would probably know this, but there was a little bit of a change with the, the Villains trilogy. The first story, Omega, wasn't actually going to be the story Omega. It was going to feature another Doctor Who villain, which was the Celestial Toymaker. This was an idea by Gary Russell, as he was going to get Michael Goff in a big finish audio. Getting the license for the Celestial Toymaker wasn't the issue, but it was getting the actor of Michael Goff and then Gary Russell, he rejected the idea. No, I don't want to do this now because the only person I want the Celestial Toymaker to be voiced by is no other than Michael Goff and no one else. So he rejected the idea and then placed in another story being Omega and most likely featured the fifth Doctor. It makes a lot of sense because it looked like he was going to play a lot of homage to one of Gary Russell's Doctor Who books being Divided Loyalties, featuring the Celestial Toymaker. Yeah, I think that's everything I want to say, really. Just the, really, the message of the video is, there are loads of classics in the early years of Big Finish, and even though they were on their baby feet at the time, they still nailed some fantastic stories, and it would be lovely for new fans to check out these Big Finish audios. So yeah, to say my final thing, to all the new Big Finish fans, getting into Big Finish, and looking at the most recent releases, I recommend you look at the early years of Big Finish. Just check them out. So on this date right now, the Ultimate Showcase is nearly ready. It's going to have a ton of Doctor Who books and in the end, going to be unboxing and showcasing 11 extremely rare Doctor Who books. And the rarity of these books go even past Love Barrow. You know, one book which I'm trying to get in the Ultimate Showcase is proving difficult. 